know, people are always like, oh, I have the best fans in the world, I love my fans. Like, fuck you, I have the best fans in the world. Because my fans built my career brick by brick by brick themselves. Like, it was them doing it. There was no, you know, secret, you know, media machine. This is an honest to goodness grassroots movement where one person told two people, told four people, told six people, and people took personal ownership over the music. Well, I walked through the desert, instead of taking the road. Less traveled, I decided I had some place to go. You look better in this light to me than ever before. I would apologize, but you don't want to hear it no more. I've been resigned for a while. Welcome back to Sweden. Stockholm. I have been here a whole bunch of times now. This is one of my favorite cities in the world. And I mean, I just love being in Sweden in general. I've been to Malmo, I've been to Gothenburg, I'm in Stockholm now. And we went to North Shopping, we played a Broval two years in a row. And the Swedish fans were the first ones that kind of like coalesced into like a big live audience first. And so it always kind of holds like a special place in my heart. I really love to be here. This is the last stop on the, the European tour. How's it been so far? It's been horrible, I'm thinking about quitting. Um, I, I actually, honestly, <laughs> this has been the most universally positive tour that I have ever been on in my life. Everybody's getting along, the band is just red hot, they're killing it, and um, the fans are showing up, people are excited, they're singing along to the songs, so it's just been great. We've just been, you know, traveling around, drinking fancy coffee where we can find it, and, <laughs> you know, bringing rock and roll. So the, the new album, it's been out for three weeks now, uh, has your audience picked it up quickly. Absolutely, it's been crazy. Every every night it seems like more and more people are singing along to the new songs, which is really surprising. Uh, in the past, I mean, we've had people react to the new music quickly, but this is like a very large portion of the audience will show up and sing these seemingly, to me, brand new songs. I, I don't know how they, how they learn them so quickly, but they're so enthusiastic about them. So we are very, very lucky. So the Nighthawks, that's your new band, right? Or aren't they? So the band, you know, it is like a, it's something that kind of came together, sort of you know by accident. Mm -hmm. you know, honestly, we we started working on this record with the intentions of making just making me another album, but being together and being on tour and working on that album, we just we kind of it just started to feel like a band. You know, we started to work together on things and write songs together and work on arrangements and you know compositions and all this stuff and it just it just started to feel like the way that a band works together and we all like we really get along so well it's like nothing i've ever seen before in my life like it's like every day is like a summer camp reunion everybody's just so happy to see each other and do stuff together and be on the road together like we're really really lucky it's incredible so you know so yeah i guess i joined a band i don't know I need to confess that I, I'd heard your name before, but I've mm. never heard your music. Mm -hmm. But obviously I have listened to the new album, and I have to confess that I'm kind of obsessed with uh, White River Junction. Ah. Uh, so could you please tell me a bit more about that song? Well, uh, before I had ever considered making another album, I, I had just put out my last album. Yeah. It was maybe... April or so, or May of 2014. So my new record had only been out a couple months at that point. Mm -hmm. I had a couple weeks off in LA, and so we kind of moved into the Chateau Marmont. We got a little bungalow by the pool there. And it's like such a stupid rock and roll cliche to say that, but like I, I had some time off, and I love that place. So I thought, eh, you know, we'll hang out here, and I'll, maybe I'll write some songs. And I had, this band was getting together in August. And so there's there's seven of us, and everybody can sing like a bird. It's like being mm -hmm. in a choir, but everybody has a beard and wears lots of denim. And so, basically, I, I was like, I want to write something that showcases like giant stacked harmonies to show w what I think is going to be great about putting this ensemble together. And so I wrote White River Junction first. That's the first song that I wrote in the entire cycle of the album. I ended up writing about 150 tunes over the course of the next year, but that was first. Mm -hmm. And and then the next day, or right around then, I wrote Hotel Room as well. Mm -hmm. So the first two that I wrote ended up on the record, and then the very last one that I wrote, almost a year later, was Lies and Cigarettes, and that also ended up on the record. And then in between, there were you know a whole bunch of other kind of clunkers and you know not so good ones, and then the occasional good one, and that's mm -hmm. how we 
ended up with 11 for the record. And White River Junction, the, the, the genesis of that, you know, I was on tour one, I guess, earlier that year, like in 2014. It was cold, and I was, you know, somewhere up north, freezing on the highway, and, you know, shivering in the bus, and I was just like, I looked out the window, and I saw the sign for White River Junction, and I was like, God, we are far away from home. And it's like, hmm, White River Junction. We're far away from home. We up north, there's some place cold. I can feel your heartbeat. Through your dress, I pull you close. The sun's coming up real soon. And I don't know where we should go. White River Junction. Way up north, somewhere far away from You know, and so some of the songs, you know, it's like that, like I capture little little moments, it's like little thoughts. But by and large, like, I think that whether the narratives are very specific, you know, detailed things that, point by point accounts of things that have happened to me, or whether they're things, you know, that I made up, uh, I think it's kind of irrelevant. Like, what I want is for you to take the songs home, mm -hmm. and then for it to be about you. Because, mm -hmm. you know, art is... Um, I have a word. There's a word in my brain uh, that I want to use for it. It's uh, subjective. Mm. Art is subjective. Yeah. And so if you paint a picture and you think it's of a house and I look at it and I think it's a dog, then to me it's a dog. It doesn't matter if you think it's a house. And I feel that way about songs as well. Like I don't want to hear the stories of other people's songs. Like I don't want to know what you were thinking when you wrote that song. Because a great song should feel... If you love it, it should feel like a part of your life. It should be one of your stories. So I make the records for me, but then I put them out in the hopes that they become yours. Mm -hmm. like that's what I want. And so that's why I generally don't like really share the specific details of the stories behind the songs because I don't want it to disappoint people and I don't want it to shape how they take it into their yeah. own lives because it's subjective. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it should be about you. It's yeah. yours. Also, I noticed that during 2015, your music had been streamed for... 220 years, was it? Like something like that? Isn't that insane? Yeah, <laughs> the internet is crazy, isn't it? It's 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 really and that's just on Spotify. I mean, yeah. like, I was getting uh, 15 million plays a month on Pandora that year as well. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's 180 million plays in a year, which I think it actually ended up being more than that. It's it's insane. It's like unbelievable how how much people are consuming my music on a global scale, and I'm not saying that like wow, you know, <laughs> check me out. Like it, it's it's crazy. Like it's yeah. actually staggering to me that that exists, that it's a, a thing. Um, because I, you know, like I'm, this is like stuff that I created from nothing. Like mm -hmm. things, think these things lived inside of my head, and then I took them and I went, and you know, like they manifested themselves into real life. Which so it's really crazy to me that anybody gives a shit at all. Yeah. Like, it's, like, crazy to me. And, like, obviously, I work very hard and it's really meaningful to me, but I, I can't believe that it actually, like, it, like it, it took, like, people are doing it, they're listening. Because mm -hmm. it's not like I have some kind of, like, giant global media machine behind me promoting my music. Like, this is an honest-to-goodness grassroots movement where one person told two people, told four people, told six people, and people took personal ownership over the music and spread it around because they believed it and they cared about it. And so for me, that's been everything. You know, people are always like, oh, I have the best fans in the world, I love my fans. Like, fuck you, I have the best fans in the world. Because my fans built my career brick by brick by brick themselves. Like, it was them doing it. There was no, you know, secret, you know, media machine doing it. It was like really people doing it and sharing it. And so I, uh, I'm very, very lucky and that's, yeah, I, I can't believe the numbers out of it. It's staggering to me as well. Thank you for taking the time and good luck tonight. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming to talk to me. Bad intentions and good, good heart.